I've got a lot of mail to open, so I've got more packages than normal to show you, and a couple of non-electronic things for the end. Let's get started. The first things that I'm going to show you uh, won't all fit on the screen, but they're getting their own video, so that's not that big of a deal. Uh, this company here, Rock Solar, um, they sent me some stuff, and I bought this one at a discounted price from them, but the other stuff they sent for free. And you're not getting an unboxing because we had a power outage here last week and I actually used these things, um, you know, to, the way they were intended. So yeah, no unboxing, but here they are. So here you have the Weekender and here you have the Nomad and also a 100 watt uh, folding solar panel. So yeah, these things are now used because I actually used them in a situation where I had no power. That was pretty awesome. So a couple of the highlights. Um, both of these have AC outlets, as you can see. Um, they have DC outputs also. So they both do have DC outputs. Uh, this one here, well, right over here. And this one here, there's these two ports here and also a uh, car cigarette lighter port over there. Um, they can uh, support uh, some wattage here through these things. Uh, so this one here is only 80 watts. So, you know, think in terms of lighting. This one here is 400 watts. So if you have like a little bar fridge, it'll work on this. Um, and what, well, what I did even is I plugged in the solar panel to this thing, which charged it up in under six hours in the sun while the AC adapter to charge this thing was charging it. So it's these things are very neat. They also have flashlights. So this one here, the, the Weekender I think is going to be the better deal uh, for you guys um, because it's just, it's got quick charge, it's got uh, it's got a few AC outlets, it's got a DC out with an adapter to plug a cigarette lighter thing in it. A couple USBs, got another light up front here like more of a floodlight type of thing. So I think this thing here has the most potential for you guys, but also uh, this one here is for if you're like sort of like a hardcore uh, camper. You're not gonna put this in your backpack, but it is small enough to fit inside. It's just quite heavy. And this thing has quite a bit of capacity. I mean, we powered a light, mind you, it's just an LED light, but through the AC because I couldn't set anything up for the DC that soon, um, but it didn't even drop a bar after my wife and I played board games for hours. So there's a lot of capacity in this big boy. And this one here, I think has enough capacity. So this thing uh, should be your like your backpacker type thing. You can charge your phone quite a few times on, on your uh, backpacking trip. This one here is if you go uh, car camping, this is the one for you. And especially like it'll keep one of those um, those cigarette lighter, you know, DC plug um, coolers cool for quite a while. I would say, you know, easily a day would be working, but probably more than that. And so the plan is to do uh, their own videos for these two together and the solar panel, which I'll show you in a moment. And to actually uh, maybe do another video where I tear it down. I don't think they want this to be torn down. There are security screws on the sides, but I mean, we do have the technology. And here is the solar panel. Um, again, arguably too big for backpacking, but uh, perfectly fine for uh, car camping. So there's four panels just like this one. Um, and it's got uh, interface. The only thing I don't like is it uses a barrel jack for the connections. And I would much prefer MC4. Now they do give you a barrel jack to MC4 uh, connector to adapt it, however, um, the barrel jack is not as strong as the MC4, so I'd rather they just give you the MC4 and then an adapter to a barrel jack instead of the other way around. But this little flap here opens up, and then that's your uh, that's your 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 plug in there, and this is actually the cable from the uh, the big Rock Solar Nomad one uh, to charge it, but it fits right into the DC barrel jack here, but you also have a quick charge a USB 
you have a type C and you have a regular USB and you have this nice pouch where you can put everything in and you've got these nice little legs to flip that flip up and give you you know optimal angle uh, so these products definitely need their own review so I am working on that right now I do have a couple of weeks of um, bad weather upcoming but that's fine because I need to test these in optimal and non-optimal conditions if you go in the description there's going to be the links to all this stuff rock solar have told me they prefer if you buy directly from their website but you know there's nothing they can do to stop me from putting the Amazon link as well so you go ahead and you check um, you know whichever one's more convenient for you the important thing is I can say after using these things for real without any electricity in the house I would definitely recommend them there are a few little things I would improve but you're gonna have to wait for the full video for that next one up is this one which was hotly anticipated by me because it's an organization one and uh, this thing seemed like it survived a war and that's because everything that's inside has been rattling around like crazy um, so April 22nd to May 26th arrived 1976 that's the organization one and another one at 477 you guys are getting quite a bit of bonus stuff in this mailbag okay yeah so it's a combined order so that means my address is on this so I'm gonna hide it let's start with the smaller one so I can put this away Ah, there we go um, yeah here it is 50 piece screw I believe this is M3 by 10 ah, so actually I'm just gonna rip them apart uh, simply because that's not how I store screws yeah they look like M3 by 10 so yeah I was getting really low on screws and so yeah I ordered some more it's these uh, hex heads m3 by 10 now I don't have I have only four left of these m3 shorter ones wait a minute these are m3 by 10 are they not whoops I think I ordered the wrong ones oh well so it's these cap head screws. I got a uh, hundred of them, and that would be the uh, four dollars and something on the package. These are the thing, you know, I, I live in Canada, North America, and therefore uh, metric hardware is very hard for me to find. And so I have to order it online, so there it is. Now my organization is a little messed up because yeah, all the M3 screws. I have two of the same size now. I think I meant to order these shorter ones. Oh well, I don't know what I was thinking. It doesn't matter. This one here though, this one is going to solve my organizational problems. Look at the thin, thin bag. It's like grocery bag thin. So these are a whole bunch of these um, SMD storage containers and they're just, just sitting loose in there oh they come with labels well that's kinda ruined <laughs> I'm just gonna chuck that out I usually make my own labels because the orders that I've had before hadn't had any labels so there should be uh, 50 of these here oh look there's some with the labels that got stuck on them this is a mess this is like Someone in in China, their their parents sold sold me their organizational system. But anyways, yeah, they have these little flip tops. Usually, you just pull this little thing. There we go, and the top flips up. And currently, oh boy, oh there's springs and broken plastic everywhere. Currently, I have some already in this little tray. So there they are. So I usually group them by type. So these are all 0805 uh, surface mount um, uh, capacitors. Yeah, so I group them like that and then I put them all in the same thing. But now you can see I've got LEDs, I've got resistors, I've got stuff that don't have any containers for them. So I ordered a whole bunch more. 
So, yeah, this is going to be annoying to put together now. Some of them are definitely broken, which is not good. But I kind of knew that was going to happen. Hmm. How the heck do you install these? Oh, slide it up like this. There we go. That one's not broken. There's a little spring and there's a few little plastic pieces. So I expect some of them are going to be very broken. And some of them have the labels already put on. This is the weirdest purchase I have ever made. But yeah, these are essential for my organizational philosophy. I'm probably going to build some custom trays for them. This tray is just uh, an experiment I did out of uh, foam board and hot glue. That's not going to be a permanent solution, especially as the collection grows. So yeah, little SMD holders. And oh wow, this one is really not in good shape. And hopefully, most of them still work. Ooh, there's some black splooge in here. Don't think these were new, especially the fact that uh, some of them have labels on them. Hmm. You get what you pay for, I guess. Next one up is this one here. This is actually one that has a label. DIY module DIY. Um, I'm surprised. Usually they don't have labels because they go through a reshipper or whatever. Oh yeah. Might have to zoom you in for these guys. These things are absolutely tiny but there are uh, 20 of them and these are EG2104S and I the listing was for IR2104S so hopefully it's the same thing. But um, these are basically MOSFET drivers. So in case you didn't know, um, a MOSFET needs to be switched very decisively on and off if you want to use it as a switch because the time it spends kind of raising the gate to its um, you know, full on and then dropping the gate to its full down, um, that actually heats up the MOSFET. And so uh, I did order some, um, some MOSFETs the other day uh, on previous mailbag and these will be my first attempt on using a MOSFET driver. So I need to look at the data sheet to be 100% sure, but I believe you can use a logic level signal, like a 5 volt or smaller, maybe 3.3 volt signal, to tell this thing that you want the gate open, or you want the gate you know, activated, and then this chip will use a lot of current, a relative high amount of current, to drive that, that gate high super fast and then back low super fast when you want it uh, off. And so uh, you can use a regular like Arduino or ATtiny or PIC or whatever um, to control really high current loads on a uh, MOSFET. At least that's the thought. What I want to do is eventually I want to build my own speed controller, like motor speed controller. Sort of like, you know, this thing here, this is a um, uh, this is a, a motor controller, but I want something for brushless motors and I want to design it myself. So yeah, I've got these, they're in surface mount uh, because I think the dip ones were way more expensive. So I'll probably design it with this. But again, I'll probably do the uh, dual footprints like I've been starting to do on my PCB way stuff. So yeah, look forward to this in the future. I'm actually going to solder this onto a little adapter first and have a play with it before I integrate it into my circuit boards. Next one up is this one here. Um, it says adapter times one, adapter times one, adapter times one. Um, April 22nd to May 5th, $18.27. And if you watched my previous mailbags, this should be no surprise. These are uh, SMD resistors in 1,000 off quantities. Uh, these are 0805 sized because, again, I am making more circuit boards. My partnership with PCBWay is going well, which means I'm running out of um, resistors, really, because, uh, you know, when you make something like especially LED boards, or you need a resistor for each LED or each string of LEDs. 
um, you start running out and you know that's what these things are for to store all these guys in so we have um, 4.7k we have 10k we have 1k we have 100 ohms and we have 100k so just kind of the big values um, so yeah 18 bucks for uh, 5,000 resistors, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, 5,000 resistors. They get expensive, uh, but again, I think they are about a cent each here locally. So that's kind of expensive. That would be uh, 50 bucks. So, you know, I got it for less than a cent each. And, you know, they go into projects. So what can I say? Nothing much to say about these. Next up is this one here. Uh, this is pretty exciting. Um, this is actually sent to me by a company who subscribes to my YouTube channel. I, I saw that they subscribed to my YouTube channel. I emailed them and said, hey, I noticed you subscribed. I love your products, you know, and I'm pretty honored that you're subscribed. And they said, you love our products, huh? How about we uh, send you one of them? And I said, why not? Absolutely. So this is from um, Miniware. They make those little, um, they make those little, uh, like, jeez, uh, 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 what are they? TS-80, TS-100? TS-100 uh, soldering irons, these little guys. And they asked if I wanted to take a look at something else. Uh, let me just see if the stuff is good. Yep. Okay. So, dear Dan Simple Electronics, that's me. Thanks so much for the help reviewing our product. Miniware DT71 Digital Tweezers LCR Meter. For your convenience, I listed some of the features. So there's the features. Very nice. Um, please add our sales link to your video. Yep. Uh, be our pleasure. Interested in every your tools in the future? Yeah. Absolutely. I love great tools, and that's what we have here. A bit of bubble wrap and a box. So yeah, DT71. It's weird. It's like you know, it's a it's a relatively inexpensive set of tools, but they're really nice. They're really small, and they work really well. Let's see how this um, how this thing will work. Left hand, right hand, smart recognition. Okay. All right. Let's see. Ooh, wow, this is, you know, you see them on, on screen and you think, wow, that's pretty small, but no, you have no idea. These things are tiny. Okay, plug this in. Oh, turns on. It's got a signal gen. Identify, signal gen, calibration measure interesting you're probably not seeing the screen there it's got new little tips for it looks like USB charging I'm guessing I'm guessing you have to charge this portion with this and then you have to charge this portion with this I don't know. I haven't read the manual yet, but that's kind of the that's kind of the deal here on the mailbag. First we unbox things, then we take a look at them. Okay. Well, um, I mean, here I've got a uh, an LED here. Let's see what it does. If I can hold it. Okay. It says resistance. Six, 66 kilo ohms. That's probably my hands, to be honest. Hmm, it's a little hard to grab this. Let's see if we can get off the struggle bus here. I'm not sure if it does diode check. Okay, let's go find some stuff. 
Okay, you're going to have to bear with me here. It's hard to keep this thing in focus, and I also have to keep away from uh, this part here because that's a touch button at the end, right, right there. See that? Identify. It's difficult. Okay, so I only have small value resistor and some small SMD caps here. Let's see if we can figure it out. So this is supposed to be a 470 pico farad. 445. Um, these little SMD uh, caps, they have big ranges on them. So yeah, that, that's actually pretty good. The resistor here, which you can't see, I know, because I can't keep both in focus. Um, it's a one ohm resistor. Oh, it automatically found that it's a resistor and it's measuring 1.2 ohms. That's pretty neat. Let's see if I can change it. So you have to press it together. For whatever reason, it's not letting me change it. You seen that? Hmm. It's like stuck in a uh, in a loop there. How do you turn that off? Hmm. So it knows, it knows that it's a resistor. And this, it knows it's a, it's a capacitor. I wonder how come it wasn't, um, hmm. Seems like I've got a lot of uh, trial and error to do with this. There is a manual. But, I mean, usually I don't read them when they're first out of the box. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, simply because it should be, you know, user-friendly enough. Oh, it seems like now it's down to sign, noise, user, pulse, sign. So now it's in the um, function gen mode. Interesting. Um, I'm a big fan of push buttons personally so I think I would rather it be a push button but I mean I have to give this a fair try to give it a fair shake I will say though the construction seems very high quality it's very impressive so yeah uh, there'll be a link in the description to these uh, but until then I need to uh, test it out and see if it works before I can get a recommendation on it. But I mean, I love minware stuff, so, or miniware stuff, I should say. Oh, calibration, close tips, please. Keep close. Open tips, please. Keep open. Save data. Can I say yes? There we go. Back to measure. Maybe it just wasn't calibrated. It's hard for me to do this on camera, but yeah, anyways. Full video coming shortly. On to the non-electronic part of the mailbag because I still need to open my mail, which is not electronics. Um, so this one here, $12.14 arrived in two days because it's Amazon. And this one here, uh, April 29th, May 24th, $16.69. Nice. Uh, and this, yeah, this seems a bit smaller than I expected. And this will make sense to some of you very shortly. Aha, there we go. So, if you have seen my secondary YouTube channel, S.E. Con Dairy, uh, specifically spelled oddly. You'll know that I recently went up to my parents' cottage and had some time on the water. And so I have a little aluminum rowboat, 12 feet, up there. And um, first of all, I haven't been up there for a while, so the plug if you guys don't know, a, a boat typically has a, a hole in the back underwater 
that you have to plug up with uh, one of these plugs. Uh, so basically you just run this through the hole and then when you clamp it, it kind of expands. You see that the rubber kind of expands? So yeah, the plug, my, my father put a new one in years ago and now it's all, you know, destroyed. So got, got new plugs, two of them. And this here is because I have a very old Evinrude um, outboard motor, 9.5 horsepower from the 60s. And this is a rebuild kit for the carburetor. Not sure if I'll need to rebuild it, but um, I figured I'd order it on, from AliExpress because it's much cheaper. $16 to rebuild the entire carburetor seems pretty reasonable to me. These gaskets are a little distorted, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, if you go onto the uh, secondary YouTube channel, SE Con Dairy, you'll probably see me working on that boat. Um, my parents are selling that cottage, so it won't, I won't be able to go up there much longer. So I will spend as much time as I can on the water. I'm also starting a new contract with the college in June, late June. And so I kind of want to get up there and you know, spend some time up there before the end of June. Now, uh, you know, I'm not super comfortable up at that cottage. There's no uh, cell reception, there's no internet, there's no nothing, uh, and there's tons of bugs. And so I usually don't spend the night there, but it's not all that far from the city, so it'll be day trips. So yeah, I'm gonna go up, record some stuff, have some fun on the water, um, no fishing because it's in a different province and they charge a lot of money for out of province people to go uh, fishing up there. So no fishing, but hanging out for sure. And all that video stuff will be on the secondary channel, SE Con Dairy. Hope to see you there in the comments. And that, my friends, is the end of today's mailbag. I need to get cracking on some non-mailbag videos, it seems. Hmm. Also, you can expect some more videos on the SE Con Dairy channel because I've got something coming in in a couple days which will only be shown there. Thanks for watching.